Right, hello everyone. So I'm back in New Brighton. Um, at the back end of New Brighton. So I'm away from all the hustle and bustle. Um, I'm going onto the beach. That's slippy. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to fall over. I'm going to walk onto the beach, but I'm not going to go too far onto the beach because it's a bit wet down there. Yeah, let me show you. There we go. Bits of water everywhere. And the sand's probably going to be a bit soft as well. So I'm sorry if you can't see me that much, but it's, uh, it's getting dark. So, as the title says, miracles do happen. In regards to my mum, she's been given the all clear against all the odds. And I'm um, I'm ecstatic. I know my face doesn't show up most times, but I am. Uh, we've been we've been through it as a family, especially you, you know my mum the most, because she's been expecting to die. So what's happened is, for those that are new to the channel, my mum was taken into hospital on the fifteenth of October, around about then, and. She was throwing up buckets and buckets of vomit. And I don't know, I, I you know, you, you're worried, but you think not enough of it, you know, oh, she's just been sick. Then she, she has a scan, she gets told there's a, um, a bowel obstruction, but it's a closed loop obstruction. So it's, it's pinching at two ends. And the best way they described it to me was, because they put a piece of wire on the floor, they folded the wire over, and said it's pinching here, and it's pinching here. So, oh, I went, it's okay. Said in this part in the middle, that pinching is dead. So as soon as that deteriorates, it's going to leak into a blood into a into a body. She's going to get sepsis, and that's going to kill her. Right? Okay. How long she got? Hours to days. He told me. So he told me, Mum, you're not going to be leaving the hospital. You're going to die. Here. So obviously that that scared that 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 devastated that that devastated us as a family. But she didn't know how long. She didn't want to know how long she had. She thought it was going to, you know, it was a it might be months before it takes her. But so what day is it today? It's Tuesday today. We got the news on on Friday or Saturday. I can't remember now. That the obstruction, the obstruction. There's no sign of an obstruction in a bowel anymore. The put. Whatever the dye, they put dye in, and it's flowing through as normal, no obstruction at all. So it sorted itself out. So against all the odds, so it, it was less than one percent survival rate. They basically put her on end of life care, and it was horrible. And it was it, this is you know it's all down to me. And I and I said when he said hours to days. I said she'll fight this, you know. So she isn't going to, she's going to take it. And my mum, and when I speak to my mum, she said, "I'm not going to let it just take me. I'm, I'm not going to give up." I said, "No, so you shouldn't, you know. Let's be positive. While you're still, while you're still awake and breathing and talking, you're still here. Until you, until you're not breathing, then that's it. There's nothing we can do then." So, it comes to the point of an operation, an option for an operation, which would have saved her life. But they point blank refused the operation. So three of us have to make a decision on the operation. It's the doctor, the anaesthetist, and the surgeon. And if two of them say no, then it doesn't happen. And they would all say no. Because of her age, because of her frailty. And I said, she'll prove you wrong, you know. In regards to give her the operation, she'll survive it. They give her a thirty-seven percent survival rate, and I thought that's high. And they went, no, it's not. It's really low. And it's okay. Asked another doctor. So is you getting? You know, people said we'll get a second opinion. I asked all the doctors. They, they all said no. I said, what? Well, what's the scan saying? You know, we're into we're into five days a week now. I said she's only given hours to live. 
said, well, it's a closed loop obstruction, we can see it on the scan. He even showed me on the scan, and, and I, I was like, okay, but she's still here, <laughs> you know. And it was one doctor who said, let's try this, let's try that. What was the first thing he wanted to try? It was uh, something to, to put into it, into a bowel that absorbed the water out of the bowel. And it could shrink the bowel and unkink itself. And he was, he was the only positive one at the time. Then we got more doctors who come up with more ideas. And they all kept saying, are you passing wind? She's going, yeah, <laughs> farting away. So that's a good sign. That, that, that means something's getting through. Air was getting through from the stomach to the back passage. So something was getting through. So that part of the bowel can't have been dead. But they can only go off what they see on the scan. They, they said, we can't tell exactly what's going on unless we operate and have a look inside. I said, and I said, well, you, you won't do it because you won't survive it. You're going correct. I said, how do we know then what's going to happen? So, hours turned into days. Days turned into weeks. Weeks have turned into months. So, I think we're in the second month now. We've just been given the good news that she's going to survive. She's still really unwell. She's not completely out the woods. But the thing that was going to kill her isn't going to kill her anymore. So, as you can understand, there's a massive backlog. No pun intended. Well, actually, there is a pun intended. And that has to be that has to come out. So my mum can't push it out because there's so much of it. So they had to do an enema to get that out of her, and that was that that wipes out for the day. Um, she's now had a poo for the first time in two months. Get in. You know. Never be ashamed to fart in front of anyone. Never be ashamed to go for the toilet in someone's house. Because you know what? It's a celebration. Go and fart. Go and poo. Go and do what you want. You know, we've never celebrated fart so much as we have in our hospital. Every time she farts, I go, yes. Nice fart. <laughs> so, yeah, it's all good news. Uh, thanks to everyone that's, you know, asked about my mum. Even videos that I don't mention my mum in, people comment. That's all well and good, but how's your mum? <laughs> so, yeah. And the, the reason why I mentioned it in the first place is because when, when she went in, I went YouTube silent. I, had no, I, had, I couldn't be asked making videos. I had no motivation. My head was all over the place because my mum. And the last thing in my mind was getting the camera and I was going filming stuff. Couldn't be asked doing it. But I was getting messages on. Instagram, uh, people commenting on past videos on YouTube. Uh, where are you? Where have you been? You're not doing videos anymore. You're not helping the homeless anymore. So I was, I was replying to them. They're just getting too much. So I thought I'll make a video about it. I'll just let you know, let you know where I've been, what's going on in my life. Because we do have a life away from YouTube. And that's that's all I've done it for, to mention my mum. That's all I've done it for. And I'll... I'd say 99.9% .9 of you have been amazing, you know, fully behind me, and I can't thank you enough. For, you know, if it wasn't for yous, you know, as I, as I don't know where where to turn, but when strangers start wishing you well in the streets, people go, people stopping me, how's your mum? And I, and I don't know them, and, and I thank every single one of you, one of you for doing that. But I got the odd soul. Oh, this is embarrassing. Yeah. We all lose parents in life, especially at our age. You know, this is, it's it's embarrassing to be to me mentioning this. And I wasn't mentioning it for, for clout or anything like that. It's just to let people know where I was. So I made a follow-up video then because people kept asking, how's your mum? So I made a, I made a follow-up video to say how my mum was. Again, people going, oh, this is embarrassing again, you're doing it again can't please everyone never will but for loads of you were interested in how my mum's getting on and I just I had no news so every time there's new news I'd let you know this is brand new news okay I found out what three or four days ago but I haven't wanted to jinx it I'm thinking 
surely something's got to go wrong. But my mum looks great. She looks, you know, her face is plumping up. She's starting to eat foods. Okay, it's pure aid still, but it's something going in her. They took her off one of the drivers today. They've lowered all the medication down. And as I say, this is all down to my mum. Because they put her on a pathway. End of life. And they said they were giving her this relaxant. Okay, it is a relaxant. She was very relaxed. She was asleep for two days. And when she woke up, she went, I, I, I don't want this medication. It's me, you know, I, I just want to wake up. I want to talk. So I said, the doctors do a favour, take her off that medication. She doesn't want to be on it. She said, but it's doing her good. I said, how's it doing her good? She's fast asleep. She can't see anyone. She doesn't know we're here. I said, okay, we'll take her off it. I said, well, look at her. She's completely out of the game. And then the doctor said, well, this could be the end. I said, we'll take her off the medication. Let's find out if it's the end or not. And it wasn't. <laughs> so she came off the medication. She's wide awake. Doing her uh, take a break. Quizzes. And puzzles. And, yeah, I'm talking to everyone again. She pulled that tube out of her nose that was taking all the stuff out of her stomach by accident. That, that turned out to be a blessing in disguise because she wasn't thrown up. About two weeks later, she threw up quite a bit and they had to put it back in again. But she was saying, I, I don't feel sick. And they're saying, well, that's the anti-sickness medication working. And she said, but it's hurting me. This in my throat is really hurting me. It's, it's uncomfortable. Can we take it out for it? Can we take it out for a couple of hours? We took it out. It hasn't been back in since. That was about two or three weeks ago. So this is all down to my mum wanting to be normal, not have all this stuff going into her. So yeah, mum, well done. I'm proud, really proud of you. Love you a bit. Uh, my dad is going home for night now and getting his getting his head down. He's been in the, in the hospital every single night from apart from about two nights for the last two months. Okay, sleeping on a chair, wouldn't leave aside. He he's going home now of a night. Is it just like my mum's in hospital now for you know something minor, and she's going to be home soon? But it isn't a case of her getting her home soon. She's not going to be home for Christmas by the sound of it. She's very weak still. She needs to learn how to build a strength up, how to walk, basically again, and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm sorry if I'm rambling, but I'm just trying to remember. So don't miss anything else, so people ask me questions in the comments. Yeah, so. The thing is now building the strength up, getting her eating, getting the physio in to get her on her feet, make sure she's standing on her own. Make sure she can go to the toilet on her own, and then we can get her home then, hopefully in the new year. Fingers crossed. So I'm going to leave it there. So thank you to everyone that's asked how she's getting on. You know, I can't express how much all of the family appreciate it. My mum watches all the videos, my mum reads all the comments, and she's blown away by it. I'm blown away by it. So thank you all very much. Um, I can start concentrating on other things on YouTube now, so I'm, I'm going to get back out there with the camera, I'm going to start recording, I'm going to start doing stuff. And see how I get on, okay? So again, thank you. I'll speak to you all soon. Bye now.